My fellow Singaporeans, we are on the eve of the Trump and Kim summit. Now that the summit is a reality, Singapore has a historic opportunity to be the backdrop to one of the most important peace summits in world history. Certainly the most significant since the Reagan Gorbachev summit of 1987 held in Reykjavik, Iceland, which effectively ended the Cold War. Summits are invariably associated with their host country. If the summit is a success, Singapore will go down in history as the place where a giant step was taken towards world peace. At this historic moment, we need a foreign minister who can elevate the prestige and stature of our country. We need a foreign minister who has a sense of history and our country's place in the world order. Think, think of the likes of the George Canning, the Lord Castle Rays, Palmerston, Kissinger, Zhou Enlai, even Sergei Lavrov of Russia in modern day. These were people who by the force of their personality stamped their mark on their country's foreign policy. Foreign policy is the projection of a country's prestige and power onto the world stage. Unfortunately, my fellow Singaporeans, we do not have such a foreign minister. We have a foreign minister, Mr. Vivian Balakrishnan, who has absolutely no sense of history, no sense of Singapore's place in the world order, no statesmanship, no talent or caliber to be our foreign minister. Instead of telling the world that Singapore is delighted to be hosting this summit and that we will be doing everything we can, we can to facilitate a successful outcome, because it means so much to the Singapore people to have peace on the Korean Peninsula. What it means to the world at large, what it means to the Korean people on both sides of the divide. He goes to make the most ridiculous statement that we are here to serve tea and coffee. Outrageous. This man has no place to be our foreign minister. And you know what? I see that the establishment is now backpedaling. They are trying to suggest that he made those comments in jest. No, he did not. I read the first Straits Times report. Nowhere did it state that those comments were made as a quip or as a joke. My fellow Singaporeans, a sound foreign policy is vital to our nation's security and well-being. Mr. Balakrishnan, became our foreign minister on the 1st of October 2015. Ever since he became foreign minister, our foreign policy has been in tatters. Think back to our dispute with China. And it now appears that the new Malaysian government is not favorably disposed towards us. Why? Because we cozy it up to an unpopular government of theirs. And it appears that for the first six months of this year, we have done nothing, even though we are now the chairman of ASEAN. Mr. Balakrishnan criticized an opposition party during the last general elections, when they suggested that we should rethink defense spending, and he accused them of being weak on defense. Now, it's very convenient for a politician to mouth those motherhood statements. The fact of the matter is that under Mr. Balakrishnan's stewardship, our foreign policy is at its worst since our founding. We are now less secure than at any other time in our history. Today, our defense spending accounts for 25% of our annual budget, almost 4% of our GDP. Next to Israel, we are the country that spends most on defense relative to GDP. Why is that? You ask yourself. Our defense spending keeps going up year on year. But you know what? Last year, our health spending decreased. And we have a government that tells us that they have to raise taxes and GST so that 
they can take care of an aging population and increase health spending. I will never be weak on defense, but I understand that diplomacy must always be our first line of defense. But unfortunately, under this government, our diplomacy is deplorable. I made this video because I know the people of Singapore will not want all the foreign journalists who are here in our country today to go away thinking that we are here merely to serve tea and coffee. We are not. I know the Singapore people's message to the world is this. We are delighted to be the host for this important summit where two heavyweight countries have come together to solve what initially appeared to be an insurmountable problem. And I can wish President Trump and Chairman Kim only the very best in their talks ahead. Thank you.